Hey everyone, welcome to Breakout Wednesday for the 15th of uh, June 2022. It's currently about 1 p.m. on the West Coast, 3 p.m. on the East Coast. Uh, first of all, remember this is never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is simply a video blog on how one trader sees the market and everyone needs to take responsibility for their own decisions. Okay, so <clears throat> obviously the market's getting hammered. Um, what a difference a week makes. Like this time last week, my account was at, uh, my trading account was at fresh all time highs and um, when I was pretty pumped with everything and then uh, you know two three days later the market just starts absolutely getting pummeled okay and you know and I had some positions pretty much I'm in cash actually I'm in 100% cash in my trading account you know everything just started smashing back down to its base got stopped out of that one got stopped out of vet um, you know started cracking back down into its base took a loss on it got stopped out of stow uh, stopped out of everything okay so i think i was definitely probably a bit too heavy uh energy names but you know i don't think it mattered what i was long you know i think everything got hammered um and i think the energy names in many respects got hammered less right so you know even some of the big banks like look how you know look what the Commonwealth banks done um obviously the um the energy stocks are getting hammered a bit less but it doesn't matter what you've been in there's been you know blood everywhere um and so went from having an account that was um, at all time highs to um, you know having an account that's about three three percent three and a half percent or whatever four percent you know between three to four percent off its all time highs because it's it's amazing how quick you can give back money right uh, just snap you know um, and you just give back a bunch of money that you just you just made and so I you know looking back on this I should have been more I was trimming uh, I was trimming a lot of these trades. Um, and you know the PBT one for example I was trimming that heavily um, but I should have been trimming um, more heavily uh, I should have been uh, trimming more aggressively so I had to pause then um, you know as into all this strength okay um, you know but look it's hard this game's hard uh, it's really you know no one can predict the future so uh, you know in cash and chilling and there are no setups to go through okay I'm just waiting for everything to chill okay even you know, it's hard to even short anything right now because everything's already dumped a lot. Um, unless you're an intra if you're an intraday trader, there's a lot of volatility and it's pretty good times, but you're not really doing that at the moment. And uh, for my style of trading, I just there's no need for me to do anything right now. I can just chill, catch up on other things in life, and you know, just enjoy myself. You know, enjoy life. Okay. Um, now, in terms of what to do today, I've been promising. Uh, 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 for this young guy on um, Twitter to talk about position size and risk management. So let's just do it because it's a pretty quiet week. So I'm going to do it. Just let's just use this example. I can use some others, but um, when when you get into this game and you read the books out there, the classic books, they they will there's a two percent rule. Okay, that a lot of people will um, talk about, and and that simply means never risk more than two percent of your entire trading account in any one trade. Okay, and I think that that 2% rule, it really depends who you are, where you're at with your career because, you know, if you're starting out and you have a $5,000 account, which is totally fine, um, then a 2% isn't isn't much, hey? Um, and the facts are you just don't have much, um, you know, many chips and you might just need to risk a little bit more than 2% if you're just getting started with a 5k account. I mean, I'd be... If I was getting started with a 5k account, I'd probably be having like two trades open max, like two and a half k each, and then I'd be risking more than two percent. Um, you know, might have to risk five or ten percent, or maybe not ten percent, but you know, um, you know, I'm getting that. Like, I would probably be happy to risk one second. Sorry, guys, I had to pause then. Um, so I'd probably be happy to risk, you know, three percent, uh, which would be like 150 bucks, or even four percent, uh, which would be uh, 200 bucks. If I had a five thousand dollar account per trade, because it's just it's just so hard with a small account like that. Whereas if you have a much larger account, like if you got a you know, I don't know, let's just pick a number. Like if you got you know, um, two hundred k in your account, then risking one percent of that, you know, so you're risking two k per trade. Um, you know, one percent maybe sounds better when you have a bigger account, right? Because you know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you you know, if you lose two k quickly on a bad trade, that's still two k and um, and so I, I think the 1% or 2% rule 
yeah, sure, that works well for bigger accounts, but smaller accounts you've got to maybe risk a little more, okay? This is now not financial advice, right? This is just, that's definitely what I did starting out with a small account. Um, I had a really small account like um, starting out and um, I was risking way more than three or four or five percent per trade. I was probably risking, you know, maybe six or seven percent of my entire account per trade, which is stupid, but probably a bit stupid. And I definitely blew my entire account the first few times and lost everything. But when you've only got five or six, I think I had seven grand in my first account, it doesn't, you know, blowing your whole account with 7K in it isn't the same as blowing your first ever account with 100K in it, right? And so, Anyway, um, you know, this is this stuff is hard and everyone's going to have their own opinions on it. But I think um, I think the one to two percent rule is sound for big medium sized to big accounts. And and you might need to just up it to three percent for tiny accounts or, or, or thereabouts. And yeah, I think the next um, risk management position sizing thing is is that um, you know, getting long gradually, you know, like if you're hundred percent, when I'm hundred percent cash, you know, and we're just coming out of a bear, bear market or a correction, you know, I will be taking trades gradually, okay? I can't really remember what trade I took out, you know, after the first, after the last correction, the first one out, but, you know, I'll put one or two trades on and then I would never put a third one on until those ones are actually showing me, um, you know, that I'm ahead and I have a buffer in place, okay? Because if you just, if you go start putting a million trades on at once, you're just gonna get absolutely creamed, okay? Um, and if the market takes a dump. And so um, the other thing's correlation. And in many ways, like just the reason I have this chart up is that um, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta remember that if you have, you know, five trades and they're all in leading oil stocks, then that's kind of yeah, pretty similar to having one trade because if um, crude takes a dump, um, all of those stocks are gonna take a dump. Um, but I don't actually personally have a problem with that. I just think as long as I'm getting into these trades gradually and I have buffers in place where I can afford things to gap down heavily and still get stopped out for profit on many of them, then I don't have an issue in going hard on any one sector because I, that, I think that's where the alpha is in terms of really um, you know, ha having kind of super performance and massive returns. I think you've got to go hard on one sector and you've got to, got to not be scared to just you know, have a highly correlated um, investment portfolio, you know. Diversification is from, um, is great if you want um, mediocre performance, um, but if you really want to kick ass, then diversification is, is not, is, you know, really, in my opinion, is, is pretty stupid, okay? Um, and now, how much would I put on? So let's say, let's say there's 100 grand in accounts, let's do 100 grand because it just makes things easier math-wise, okay? And let's say I want to put a trade on, um, let's just get back to an easy one to look at, okay? Um, um, ah, shit, sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna get back to this one because it's so easy and clean to look at, okay? So let's just, let's just get all this crap out of the way. Okay, this is clean as anything now. Let's just even get rid of that. Um, okay, and so let's say you've got a 100 grand account and you're following the 1% rule, okay? And so it's not rocket science. I'm really just figuring out you know, the way I, I figure how many shares I want to buy is where's my stop loss, okay? So let's just say this resistance line here, and for, you know, this is really an episode here for beginners, okay? Everyone else can just tune out. If you've been training for ages, probably you're going to get nothing out of this talk, okay, whatsoever. So um, the high here is 1453, okay? So um, I'm just going to write that so I don't forget. Uh, 1453, okay? And um, I, I need to choose my uncle point, you know, the point where I'd get out if the shit hits the fan and things really don't work out, okay? And so there are a bunch of way, places I could have that stop and it really depends what sort of market I'm in. It could be below the day of the breakout. Um, it could be below this little pivot here, okay? So that would be below 1395, um, okay? And so, you know, let's just put that's 1395, um, uh, that low there. Okay, no, that's shit. That's 1339. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with me. 1339. Um, and, um, you know, and that that makes sense. I would never put it at, say, 1338. I would always put it a few pips below that. Okay, so you know, I might put it at 1334 because it's just uncanny how often you just get a stop run by a few pips and it turns around. Okay. By pips, pip, pips just means the lowest, you know, um, it's like obviously just one, one cent, okay, or whatever. So um, it's the pip is just a, it's a four, it's a currency term, isn't it? But uh, for those who are getting confused, just 
just use the word sent instead. Um, and so, um, or maybe, you know, some people would have their stops all the way down here. Okay, that's not my style of trading, but I understand that it, it, you know, it does work sometimes and some people love that kind of trading. They'd have it down there. Okay, now, if I'm putting my stop up here below the day, the breakout, I can afford to have a bigger position, right? If I have it down here, I have to have a smaller position. If I have it here, it's somewhere in between these positions. Because the size of the position is determined by, you know, the 1% rule, okay? $100,000 account, you only want to risk $1,000 on any one trade, okay? And so, let's just take this. So, at $1,453, let us say, assume you get ordered at 40, uh, filled at $1,457, okay? Um, and then let's go, we'll have a stop down at $1,334, okay? So, that's about... Um, Okay, so that's like 1453 down to say 1335, that's about a 9% decline in that stock, okay, for me to get stopped out. It would have to break out, suck me in, turn around and then retrace by 9%. So therefore, what position size can I have that allows me to, where if I lose 9%, I only lose a thousand bucks, okay? And, um, and the answer to that is, Eleven thousand dollars. All right. If I have, if I buy eleven thousand dollars of this stock, okay, eleven thousand dollars of the stock, and then it declines by nine percent, okay, um, I lose nine hundred and ninety dollars. All right. So if, it, if I buy eleven thousand of it, it breaks out, turns around, stops me out there, and I, I lose. It's a nine percent decline, and for me to only lose one percent of my entire account, I get stopped out and I'll lose $990 plus commission, so probably just over a K, okay? And that's how I just, that's how I figure it out. It's all about where is my stock gonna be placed, and then I can figure out how big my position size should be, okay? And so, one of the reasons when I'm being super aggressive with the trading in a good market, one of the reasons I love having a tight stop is because I can get a bigger position. And, you know, big positions with tight stops for a breakout trader is one of the most powerful things, um, period. Because if you get it right, like I did with PBT, okay, um, and after this huge breakout, my stop was below the day of the breakout, but you know, I, not, I did not use this line here as my break, in breakout, I used about a 5% stop loss rule, which meant that um, I could just, and I just kind of randomly choose that, to be honest with you, I just figure if this breaks out and comes down 5%, you know, it's not doing what I wanted it to do and I just get the hell out. I don't, I'm all, not always choosing pivot points and stuff for stop losses, okay? Um, for these perfect setups, I just want them to explode and just go, otherwise I'm just gonna get the hell out very quickly if they just nudge up and turn around. And so, um, by having a tight stop, like let's just have a look at this. If you if you put your stop below the stop the day of the breakout, suddenly um, you are only risking, suddenly that's a 3% move. For you to get stopped out, which is tiny, it's a tight stop, isn't it? But then all of a sudden, you can literally have um, a thirty thousand dollar position instead of an eleven thousand dollar position. Okay, shit, I gotta get this phone. Sorry, one sec. Hi, sorry guys, I had to have the call. So, um, yeah, so I think I was at, um, you know, a tighter stop just means a thirty grand position compared to eleven grand position. If you have to have your stop down here, if I wanted to have my stop all the way down here. I'm not going to do the math on that, can we bother bit? My position would probably have to drop to like four or five grand, okay? And so you can see that, yeah, there's a higher chance you're not going to get stopped out and you're going to have a winning trade and you give it room to wiggle and go. But if, if, if I did end up winning one day, um, you know, my win's going to be nothing to write home about. Whereas uh, for me, growing accounts quickly is about being aggressive, um, finding the best setups, um, having a tight stop and therefore being able to have as big a position as possible while still obeying the 1% rule or 2% rule or whatever I might be um, doing at that point in time. Um, and um, the only other thing, um, that is really it. Um, I think that uh, closely um, related to all this is how important it is to have goals and then to scale that account as quickly as possible. For example, like let's say someone, you know, ha you know back in the day account was, um, you know, um, let's say hypothetically, you know, someone has a $63,000 account, then, but they have savings maybe as well. And so I, I kind of still do today, but I definitely used to a lot. I'd set goals and I'd tell myself, hey, 
If I can get my account closed at over $70,000, then I'm allowed to put another 10,000 in the account. That takes it to 80,000. Then I'd set another goal of hitting 90,000. If I can hit 90,000, I'm allowed to put another 10,000 in. That'll take 100,000. And that's a way to, to really grow an account a lot quicker. Um, and, and, um, and, you know, I think that that really works, I think, worked for me. Um, and lastly, just on risk management, position sizing, there's an old saying that it's okay to panic as long as you panic, panic first. And um, I think that's definitely very true. Like, even if, if you look at just how um, I didn't handle this last correction as well as I normally do, um, you know, uh, but I wasn't the last to panic. I wasn't panicking down here, okay? I was panicking on this day, okay? Um, you know, uh, and what you don't want to be is the idiot panicking here, okay? Or if this gaps again down tomorrow, down to seven and a half bucks tomorrow, you don't want to be the one panicking then. Um, I think that when there is true shit hitting the fan, uh, like what we've seen with the recession fears, um, you might have, I will have plans in place for trades. You know, my, my plan might be, you know, have a stop below this and blah, blah, blah. But then that's just a, that's, that's not real well. That's just a plan that you put in place. And then, before you know it, like what happened if, you know, a huge bomb was dropped or, you know, that we've seen what we've seen with this recession stuff and just a total market meltdown. I'm not going to wait until it's crashed down here to sell. I don't have a problem in panicking early as long as I am on my toes and I panic super early and get the hell out. And so that's why, I, you know, what I did, usually I would have been a day earlier. I was a bit off my game, but um but this i just don't i personally don't see a problem in panicking early um trying to panic before everyone else panics it does mean that sometimes i i will false alarm i'll think the world's about to melt down i'll panic sell my go to complete cash and then have the market violently bounce and look like an idiot but that's the game hey if this was easy everyone would be doing it take care chat next week hope that helped mate.